Hey everyone, Wayne Fox back. I thought I would add another video about the P900, a little bit of a follow-up. I've been using it for about three weeks now, and one of the things that's a little confusing about this printer is the two options that are available that aren't on other Epson printers. One is called Black Enhanced Overcoat, and the other is called Carbon Black Driver Technology. Now, when you go through the various quality settings, as I showed in my last video, the Black Enhanced Overcoat is something you can turn off or turn on, and if you want to get the carbon black technology, then you use the actual maximum settings. And I thought, well, okay, let's let's test it out. So what I did was I printed uh, this target print at each of those settings. And one thing to understand is, you know, I didn't bother with a 1440 non-photo because I think most photographers want to go with the interweaving or the microweaving, which gives them a little better quality. So I did 1440 photo microweave without black overcoat and with black overcoat and then i did 5760 without black overcoat and then i did 5760 at max quality and what i'm trying to discover is is it take more time what's the real difference and surprisingly enough it obviously is making the printer do more passes to apply this black overcoat and it takes longer let's uh, real quick we can talk about the times and we'll talk about what it's trying to do uh, one thing that's pretty cool is you can go into the history and as long as you haven't turned the machine off, you can go back and look up your jobs and you can print out these summary sheets. And what I found, if I do 1440 photo without the black enhanced overcoat, it took two minutes and seven seconds to print the eight by 10. If I did the black overcoat, I turned that on, it was two minutes and 59 seconds. So about 30% more time. If I went to the 5760 resolution without black overcoat, it took, uh, and I can't, it looks like it took five minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> I need to put my reading glasses on. Uh, turning the black overcoat, it goes all the way to 12 minutes and 58 seconds. So from five and a half minutes to 13 minutes, huge difference, really huge. Then if I go to the max quality setting, which is the carbon black driver, it only takes about eight more seconds, 13 minutes and six seconds. Now I've heard a few people say that that carbon black sometimes you have to be careful because it tends to block things up what's interesting is when i did these profiles one thing i wanted to see was how black the blacks were and we'll get to that in just a minute so obviously using the car the black enhanced overcoat does take more time it also uses more ink my light gray is definitely going down faster than the others now that's not abnormal but normally it goes down similar to the gray and this is going down about twice as fast as the light gray visually I having, I'm having a really hard time picking up any differences at all. I've looked through these prints, uh, compared the lowest quality that I did, which is 1440 photo with the out the black overcoat. And I'm trying to see if I can pick up. And I really, it's the quality level, just, I just not a lot of difference. Now, I suppose if I got really picky and maybe there's going to be some images, I'm going to have to try to find something with some ultra, ultra, ultra fine detail just to see if that 5760 resolution ever does actually offer an advantage. The one thing I should mention is what the two things are trying to do. The first one is the black enhanced overcoat. So it's trying to eliminate or reduce a phenomenon known as metamerism. Now metamerism is a phenomenon where something looks like a different color under different light sources. In other words, it seems to change color. Uh, it can happen with anything that's diets tends to be with darker colors and as you look under one light source it will look a different slightly different color uh, i don't know how extreme it can get i think in these i don't think that metamerism has been a real big problem for a long time and of course it only looks different under light sources but usually it looks okay even if it is slightly different and it's not to be confused with another phenomenon called bronzing and I haven't seen that in uh, inkjet photographs for a long time, but I thought that's what they were trying to get rid of was the bronzing effect. So I'm not sure it's that useful of a technology. Uh, the P800 doesn't have it. This is the first Epson I know of that has it. I can't remember if my 90, uh, my 50 or my 9570 has it. It probably does, but um, I've really never paid a lot of attention because it prints so dang fast. I just print at the max quality all the time. The, uh, Carbon black driver technology is there to deliver blacker, richer blacks. And I'm not sure what they're doing there to get that. 
I have heard a few people say that dark colors tend to look blotchy with that. Uh, I'm not seeing it on these prints. The 5760 Max quality looks um, looks amazing, but then again, they all look amazing. And if I look at this area, you know, down here, I've got this strip here, which I've talked about, where you've got zero, two, four, six, eight, and I don't really see any difference at all between the squares blocking up or being a problem. But obviously, that's a lot of time to consume. Now, this got me curious, so what's the point then? And I thought, well, what I really need to do is see how it affects the, the gamut. Does it affect the gamut? And that got me curious. So what I did is I printed a 918 patch target from my i1 profiler uh, software. It's just the standard target that's built in. And I created a profile at the four settings with all the defaults and i1 profiler. So everything's the same except for They've been printed at different settings on the printer. And I was surprised that there's a substantial increase in gamut as you increase in the quality. I mean, I was really surprised. Now, kind of a caveat, I also decided to do the same thing with my 9570. Last week when I did the 900 video, I talked about how the print from the 9570 and the uh, P900 looked really almost identical to me or virtually identical to me. And I said, they're using the same ink set. And understand, I should have clarified that. They are using the same ink set, but the difference is the 9570 is using 11 inks when it prints a print, and the 900 is using nine inks. It's a 10, it's a 10 ink head with nine of them printing at any given time, depending on matte or photo black. The other is a 12 ink head with 11 printing, because it also has the green and the orange that were in the previous generation, as well as the violet. The gamut on that printer is substantially larger than the gamut on this printer. And that gets into the whole thing as we get bigger and bigger gamuts, at what point can our eyes really see it? Most photographic images don't have enough colors out in that outline gamut area that when they're pushed into gamut by the color management system, it causes a problem. Now, if you get something, I would think probably artificial is a little bit more of a problem. If you're trying to do spot colors, some of those are really outside the gamut of uh, some inkjet printers and lab places that are doing proofing for pre-press and stuff uh, might be a little more critical but there are certainly are going to be some photographic images that have a lot of colors that might be out of gamut and of course the bigger the gamut of your printer the less likely that's going to happen what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these profiles we're going to compare their gamuts and then i've also created a, a map of the colors in this particular image and what we can do is we can overlay the larger profile against the smaller to see what colors are in that area and how much is there because those are colors that if we use a lower quality setting would have to be pushed into gamut whereas with a higher quality setting they don't have to be now i know that might sound confusing so just bear with me let's jump into color thinking i think it'll become clear as we go okay so here are our uh, five profiles i made starting out with 1440 no overcoat 1440 with overcoat the 5760 with no overcoat, and then here's 5760 at max quality. And I've also got over here my 9570, and the 9570 uh, is at max quality setting for that. First of all, if we take a look at the maximum blacks, you'll see that all four of these profiles give me the same L3 value, which is one point better than the 9800 or the P800 had. My 9570 actually gets all the way to L2 which is really black, theoretically zero as black as you can get. But even with the uh, carbon black driver, we're not getting a quote black or measurable black. Now, I think it's a little more complicated than that because we're also talking about a lot of very low saturated dark colors. And we'll see in a minute that that area of the gamut does expand as we go. If we look at the gamut volume, we start at 738,000 if we use 1440 photo without enhanced overcoat if we add the enhanced overcoat it does give us a slight amount of improvement in the, the total gamut volume once we jump up to 5760 that gives us even a bigger jump in the gamut volume at 771 to 738 and that's i assuming because it can lay down more dots it has the ability to mix the colors and thus create some colors that it can't create with the larger dots when it's doing the 1440 mode and of course, if we go all the way to the maximum quality, you'll see we're all at 791,000. So substantially more gamut, that's about 10% gain in gamut volume. 
visually very hard to see the difference. I think if you have a lot of a lot of colors out of gamut at 731, but they're in gamut, or at 1440, but they're in gamut at 791, might make a difference. And I'm going to kind of demonstrate that here in a minute. Just as a comparison, here's my 9570, and my gamut volume here is 940,000. And as I mentioned, that's because it not only has the violet ink, but it has the green and the orange ink as well. So it's probably the highest gamut printer that Epson might have ever made. I don't remember one with a gamut volume this high. And this is on Epson Premium Luster. Other papers might even deliver more. All right, so next let's take a look at the graphs on this and just kind of compare. And we'll overlay them and show how the gamut grows. And then I've also got a, uh, basically I've mapped all the colors in this image and we'll see it at what areas where it might make a difference. Uh, let's take a look at that. All right, so we're going to graph the profiles. Let's start off. This is the 1440 gamut without the black overlay and if I then go and add the 1440 with black overlay that just shows you it's larger and you notice especially down at the bottom so the black overlay is helping us with the low saturated colors going on if we go and let's turn those two off this is the 1440 with black overlay compared to the 5760 without black overlay and as you can see most of the gain is in the darker tones a little bit more different you can see especially right in this area now we're going to compare the 5760 with black overlay and we get another kind of gain you notice on the bottom everything the further we go the better the the less saturated colors get and real quick now let's just compare that to the 1440 and as you can see there's a little bit of difference especially in the the lower saturated colors uh, the lower we go the less the darker and the closer to the middle the less saturated uh, just as a comparison though let's turn that off and this is the difference between the lowest quality setting of the p800 or p900 versus the gamut of my 90 uh, 9570 and you can see it's substantially substantially larger uh, in almost all respects there's a few that are very close to the same usually when this white disappears it's because they're virtually identical but look at all the difference in these colors here so now the question would be when does it make any difference and to do that we're going to go back to this one versus this one and I really don't think there's enough gamut difference to be visually substantial. And one way I can test that is to map out the colors. Let's turn those off for a second. And these are all the colors that are contained with that image. Now, what I did was I reduced the resolution dramatically to try to isolate the colors, because if I uh, did the image as a, as a whole, it would take forever. But if we turn on our lowest quality setting, then all the colors outside of this area have to be uh, by the color management system has to map those into gamut and it does that in a rather remarkable way and if you really want to know how that works because what's going to happen is if i once i map that in all of these colors are going to be moved in relationship to each other i've got a video that shows that really well it's the fourth video of my color management series I encourage you to watch that because it's really intriguing how the colors are moved based on the relative or the set of the, the perceptual rendering intention that you use. But what we want to look at is the, the areas between the areas between the white and those are the colors that would benefit from the improved gamut. And as you can see, I don't think that the gamut is going to change enough that you're visually going to see much difference. I just don't think you have enough difference in the gamut that you'll really be able to pick up any visual difference. Yes, there are some colors that wouldn't have to move quite as far, but if we compare that to the 9570, now we're talking about a lot of differences. All these colors, uh, for example, all these these reds and, and stuff that are inside the white, they don't have to be moved as much. I don't have, to, these colors only have to be moved to here. They don't have to be moved all the way to here. And the same when you get over in the blues, all of these colors, 
uh, basically all of the greens are going to stay within gamut except for these few so all these colors don't have to be moved all the way to here despite that visually with this particular image it's it's almost impossible to see any difference so just because we get a better gamut a lot of times it doesn't really make any difference now there might be some applications it's more and there are certainly some types of images where it will come into play but that won't mean it will look bad i mean the whole idea i mean we can we can see photos in a book which has a gamut of half the size of these photo papers that still look really awesome because the way that our vision works and the way that we perceive colors and the way the color management system focuses on preserving the relationships of colors to each other and I've got a whole video series about that if you want to watch that. So anyway, uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of what the differences are in the settings and it gives you a little bit of an idea. I really think that a lot of people will be really quite happy with 1440 photo without black overlay, which means it's probably just as fast as the other printer. And even if you go to 5760 without black overlay, I don't think you'll see uh, it's not that much longer to print than the P800 was. I just wanted to make this video and clarify that as, a, as I work with the printer a little more and learn a few nuances about it. I might add a few other videos. We'll see a lot of really good videos out there that go into more detail about how to put on the paper feed and things like that. And I don't know that I really need to get into those. Uh, I just try to, you know, this is my perspective on it. Just trying to give you how I feel about it. Glad I bought it. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching the video. Uh, hopefully I'll have another video working on something uh, lately my getting ready for golf season because it's getting nice outside so I might have a hard time being motivated to really make videos because uh, this is the time of year that I do really enjoy playing golf anyway hey thanks for watching see ya